I'm going to show you that's small is the most rarest out of the, the three, I believe. This is called the Open Pandora. And I would call this a UMPC, even though some people would like to call it a game console, because uh, it has these controllers right here. It has kind of uh, this movement controller, which is an analog stick, and you have another analog stick right here. And some people like to call this actually a gaming console, which I don't think does it justice. This is more of a UMPC because it does everything. This runs a Linux distribution, a custom Linux distribution, uh, Angstrom, I believe. And um, it's small and it's a full computer. It's, it's not just for playing games and stuff. You could play games for sure. You can run emulators on it. You can run a DOS emulator. You can run like a Atari emulator, SNES, a GBA, uh, N64, a DS, what have you. You can run all those emulators and you can play it with these controls. Um, but you can do so much more with it because it's a Linux machine. And this is like a pocket Linux computer. Definitely smaller than the, than the Pepper Pad 3. Um, which is a much bigger UMPC. But if you want like a small portable Linux box, this is the way to go. And this is made by a company called Open Pandora. And uh, their website is actually called Dragon Box. Um, but it's actually made by a team of enthusiasts uh, who are dedicated to this old retro school gaming thing. And they made this console uh, kind of kind of by themselves. Like it's, it, it's funded and uh, they, they kind of made this this one and shipped it out to backers and in a kind of pre Kickstarter kind of way. And this one came out in 2012, which is not definitely more recent than the Okio and the Sony Veo, which came out in like the uh, mid 2000s, whereas this one came out in the 2010s. So this is definitely newer, but yeah, for a pocket Linux console, this is pretty cool. I'm going to show you a trick with this. Um, you can actually use the packet managers to download whatever whatever you want for this. So I can go to PND Manager and run this. All right, guys, so this is Open Pandora running PND Manager. And you can see the last updated highest rated apps on here, which are all Pandora apps, um, or actually Angstrom Linux distribution apps. And people can all develop for this system. These are basically all Linux apps. You can go to a category like games, for example, which is probably really popular. You can see all these different Linux apps that you can download and uh, use with this computer, which is really cool. So it has all these these apps and packages for it, which is really fun. So yeah, um, then after you download it, you can actually go and you can run it, you can have all these uh, different apps for it. So this is a PND manager where you find the apps, but after you have it, it will appear in the menu and then you can have anything basically. This thing does a lot. So it has a terminal, it has like programming software, it's like Python in here, um, which is a programming language, uh, stuff for development. Uh, you can run a lot of different emulators on it. I have DOSBox, I have uh, Apple II emulator, an Altair emulator, Commodore 64, uh, even a freaking Atari Jaguar emulator. It's all on here. You can all download it on here. And then you have uh, ported games, which a lot of people uh, port different games to the Open Pandora. You guys uh, see here, there's like Minecraft, there's uh, Ultima, Zelda, uh, people ported all these DOS games to it, and Bomberman, I think. Yeah, there's a lot of different apps, even even StarCraft, which I'm surprised. They got, they got even StarCraft on here, and Red Alert, which is cool. And uh, yeah, there's all sorts of things you can do on this PC, which is cool. And uh, oh, even like in Wireshark, in a Usenet client, and in, in the FTP client, a Bitcoin miner. Um, BitTorrent Sync, which is, you know, my old company. It's nice to see that on there. Uh, Emule, Putty, that's all really cool. And uh, yeah, you can get basically any kind of app on here which are for this Linux distribution. And that's the cool thing about this device is that this is a pocket Linux device. It's not just um, a gaming console. It can It can run anything as a Linux computer can run, which is really sweet. And uh, for example, let's just show a game in action. 
let's run Ken's Labyrinth. So see this old DOS classic in action. I used to play this game when I was young. It's so one of the first uh, 3D games to come out, along with um, Catacomb Abyss and Wolfenstein 3D. A lot of people don't know about Ken's Labyrinth, but it is one of the first 3D games to come out. There we go. Ouch. Ooh, yeah. It comes with full sound, everything. I love it. Don't hurt me. <laughs> I like this game. It's really like uh, fun and colorful and stuff. You can buy stuff from the vending machine. Really ahead of its time, I think. And uh, it's made by some guy who made the build engine, which would later become famous, being, become um, famous from Duke Nukem 3D. It's the same engine used by Duke 3D. Um, but yeah, this is the open Pandora. And uh, let me actually escape out of here. Okay. Yes. Okay. There. So yeah, this console is pretty hard to find. I had to go on the forums to find it. Um, and ask ask someone to uh, actually sell it to me. So that's how rare this thing is. Um, but yeah, I think it's pretty unique uh, as its own. It's a good modding tool. Um, a lot of hackers use this to develop their own software. Being a Linux box, obviously, it's very hackable. And it uh, comes with two, US, uh, two SD card slots, one of which is used to hold uh, all the apps and software you install for it and all your ROMs or emulators on there. Uh, your headphone jack, volume switch, power button, uh, a battery, full-size USB port, mini USB port, and uh, mini, US, uh, mini HDMI as well. And um, trigger buttons for the gaming console aspect of, of things. And yeah, that's the Open Pandora. Uh, this is the console I talked about the most because I thought it was the most exciting out of the three. But yeah. Hey guys, I want to show off the Open Pandora console. This is a Linux computer, and I've showed it in some of my other videos before, but I want to show you guys some of the cool apps and games that I can run on it. And this actually comes with a lot of cool old ports and emulators and stuff, like the, the Atari, it has with Apple II, Altair, uh, Commodore 64, it has like almost everything, DOS, um, SNES, even Neo Geo emulators is on here. You can all get it from the uh, open app market, that's uh, Linux. Since this is a Linux computer, it runs Angstrom, so you can run any Linux app on it. This is the simple menu UI that it comes with. And uh, yeah, a lot of cool apps are on it. Audacity, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Sync, I just downloaded all of these. Um, Firefox is there as well, and Filezilla, even Putty in the terminal. So the first one I want to show you is uh, Blake Stone. And actually, you can actually use your finger on here since this is actually a touch screen, so you can just touch it and it runs. So it's Wolfenstein 3D with a Blakestone skin on it. So the guy who ported this um, is basically a modder and uh, he, he made a, a Wolfenstein 3D mod that's basically to make it look like Blakestone. So, and this is really cool because I love Blakestone. And I guess. There is no native Blakestone port on this, so this guy just... Yeah, this guy made a skin for it, so... So yeah, this is um, Wolfenstein 3D slash Blakestone playing on the Open Pandora. It's pretty cool. And I just press the little logo to go back to the menu. All right, and what else do I have? Minecraft, I have Minecraft on there. I haven't tried it yet. Um, even Starcraft, but you had to copy some sm some uh, files over. So I'm not doing that yet. Um, but maybe someday I'll show off Starcraft as well. Even Visual Boy Advance, that's the Game Boy Advance emulator.
Okay, so let me try. So Ken's Labyrinth, this is a really cool game. Let me run that. I will just press start on it. Okay, Ken's Labyrinth is one of the first uh, first person shooters to come out, along with Catacomb Abyss and Wolfenstein 3D. So it's really cool to see that on here. Welcome to Ken's Labyrinth. Yep. Open door. This is a very uh, childlike or um, cartoonish feel to it, which is really cool for a first person shooter. And there's like guys attacking you. Um, Spider. Here. Come on. There you go. And get something from the vending machine, like an apple or something. Yep. More spiders. I think when you when you get hurt, um, Ken Ken himself, Ken Silverman, the inventor of the build engine, he actually voices the sound effects in this game. So he'll like say like something like "ouch" or something when you get hurt. Okay, there. I got my staircase. Nice job. Nice job. I think that's Ken himself saying that. Just really funny. But yeah, this is Ken's Labyrinth playing a port of Ken's Labyrinth playing on the open Pandora, which is cool. Okay, right, next game, I'm going to show you guys, um, let's see, I have Daikatana on there too, this is like an old game, I even have a Python script running there, Sea Dogs is cool, I used to play that game with my brother a lot. Okay, I want to find Tyrion. This is a game I want to run to. Um, Tyrion is like, if any of you remember Raptor, which was a uh, old uh, top-down shooter, the Tyrion is kind of similar to that game. And this was used to be an old DOS favorite, old DOS classic. Yep. So. Let's see. Oh yeah, here. I have to press the shoulder buttons. We got that the Pandora has shoulder buttons on the back. Okay, so you press that to shoot. And this is pretty cool because Tyrion was an old DOS classic and uh, it's really cool to see a port of this on the open Pandora, on Linux basically. Okay, so yeah, this is um, this is Tyrion, and I can keep on playing this, but there's one other game I want to show you guys. you guys, and that's Quick 3 Arena on the Pandora. Okay, so this is Open Arena, which I guess is the open source version of Quick 3 Arena. Okay, I want to...
Okay, I'm gonna play this map. So it's cool that they have a Linux version of of uh, Quake 3 Arena. This is one of my favorite multiplayer games of all time. <laughs> now I just I need Unreal Tournament. Okay, it's got my control set up here. Look up and down. Alright. I think I can switch weapons by pressing these buttons up. Yep. Switch weapons. So yeah, this is playing a first person shooter on the open Pandora, just to show you guys that it does exist. Uh, I haven't played Quick 3 for a long time, so I'm pretty bad at this right now. Anyways, yeah, that's uh, Open Arena, Quick 3 Arena on the Open Pandora. Alright, this is Blood on the Open Pandora. Blood was a pretty, I don't know, it was a pretty um, well known first person shooter back in the day because I see a lot of abandoned warrior sites have it. I think back then it was like Heretic, Hexen, uh, Blood was one of them, Power Slave, um, Duke 3D obviously, Shadow Warrior, and uh, Quake. A lot of these games that were on the Abandoned Warrior sites back then, but they were pretty popular DOS games for the time. I haven't played this game in a long time, so I don't remember. This is how it really looked like. Who it was. I think this was using Ken Silverman's build engine. It was pretty popular back in the day. That's actually better than the pitchfork. I think I took. I think they had pistols or something. They must have been hitting me with that. Yeah, go up. Okay. okay, yeah, this is uh, blood. Oh, you can do it. 
pretty cool. Okay, and another game you can play on the Open Pandora is Angband. I'll try this game. So this is a roguelike game. So for people who play these kind of games, you know, you it's basically an RPG, uh, a very DOS-like version of the RPG. And um, I used to play like NetHack back in the day, which is very similar. But Angband is like, it's it's like a version of that. And um, let's see, here we go, new, okay. So yeah, you can like roll your character stats, um, change your strength, intuition, like all these um, usual Dungeons and Dragons kind of uh, attributes are here. Your level, your equipment, and your race and everything. That's very Dungeons and Dragons like, so this is like a real game. And here we go. And yeah, this is Angband. I used to play this on DOS, so I remember this game. You can buy like food, you can buy like items, uh, equipment, I think that's that's all there. Oops, FN, there. Um, potion restore intelligence, no, I'm fine. Okay, so you can use item, action command, use magic, and pray. Gain new spells or prayers. I used it. I learned a new spell. Uh, search for traps or doors. Look around. So these are all like a rogue roguelike game where you used to be able to press commands on the keyboard. And um, they would do things like look around or target a monster or cough a potion or something like that. And uh, Angban is a, kind of like an, an evolution of uh, of that. It's still a DOS game, so it's still old, but it's uh, a little bit more refined, I guess, than some of these other games. Eat some food. I can eat uh, B three rations of food. Okay, I ate two rations of food. Um, rest for a while. So yeah, this is um, how these real clay games work. Okay, so there's a lot of filthy street urchins right here. I've slain the scrawny cat. Wow. Okay. Uh, detects all evil monsters. I don't, I don't care about that. Well, there's a filthy street urchin here. And he stole something. He stole something from me. Okay, that's... can buy some like chain mail. I can't buy, I don't have enough money right now. But yeah, um, for those who like these old school uh, adventure type of games where it's very simple and a lot a lot of imagination is, well it's very adventurous and um, some imagination is required but overall I think a lot of people who play on these old Amigas and IBM PCs can remember these type of games, and uh, I like them. I think it's very fun. So this is Angband on the Open Pandora, and uh, yeah, it's a Dungeons and Dragons like game. And um, let's see, let's start that. Okay, this is another game called Ravage. So you select that. Okay, I just use the touch screen, I guess. Okay, space. Sorry, space is fire. So this reminds me of Tyrion and Raptor, the way that it looks and feels. It's a top-down shooter, so it reminds me a lot of those games.
So yeah, that's just an example of the type of games you can find on the Open Pandora. A lot of old school classics, ports, emulators, um, it's all in here. And um, yeah, so if you guys have any any questions about um, the system or the games or anything like that, then uh, let me know. And thanks for watching. Hey guys, today I want to play some DOS games on the Open Pandora, since that is one of my favorite things to do on the Pandora. Uh, to compare, this is my NVIDIA Shield. The Pandora is much smaller than, than the Shield. I use the Shield mostly for emulators and uh, playing console emulated games. I have the Nintendo 64, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo DS, ColecoVision, NES, PlayStation, Neo Geo, Master Gear, MAME, Dreamcast, uh, Commodore 64, the uh, TurboGrafx-16, SNES, PSP, Atari Lynx, Saturn, um, and 2600 GBC and uh, Mega Drive and Master System. Anyways, the NVIDIA Shield does everything pretty much for emulation since Android. I'm not sure which one does a better job, Android or Linux, since uh, Android was originally derived from Linux, but anyways, I use the NVIDIA Shield more for emulators and console gaming, whereas the Pandora I use mostly for DOS gaming because it has a full QWERTY keyboard here that you can use for DOS games. So uh, let's start out, and before I start out actually I want to play a cool game that I didn't get to show you guys before which is Chex Quest. Uh, this is um, kind of like Wolfenstein 3D or uh, Doom except it's like a very special version that came in a cereal box before so it's very limited if you ever find it in uh, real life it's very hard to find and uh, fortunately we have a port on the Pandora so let's see it's a very funny game <laughs> We have very funny sound effects and uh, weapons here. I think I even have like a spoon. That's why I have a spoon. <laughs> I'm not sure what this actually does. Let's see. I tried to kill someone with a spoon. Wow. Okay, I can kill him with a spoon. That's funny. But it looks like. It's like a Wolfenstein 3D with a skin on it. Wow. Nope. Oh, fruit. Anyways, that is Chex Quest. Just wanted to show you guys that. And then let's uh, get on with DOSBox. Alright. Okay, so let's try out the game here. Let's see. Alright, let's try some Jazz Jackrabbit since that's one of my favorite games to play when I was a kid. I think it's just Jazz. Oh yeah, the music in this game is pretty good. I love playing the old school DOS platformers like Jazz, Jackrabbit, Hocus Pocus, uh, Commander Keen, Bio Menace, Monster Bash. These are all great games. Alright, let's try. Jazz, Jackrabbit 2 is also really good. There we go. Yeah, it's like Sonic the Hedgehog for PCs. Basically, that's what this game is. It's Sonic for PCs.
Alright, and that's Chaz Jackrabbit playing perfectly on the open Pandora. Okay, now let's try another platformer. Uh, maybe Exargon. If you guys remember Exargon from Epic Games. Really wish Epic Games would re release their old classics just like Apogee did. Yes. There we go. Man, DOS platformers are so good. Since I didn't have a console when I was a kid, so these are basically my equivalent of um, Super Mario and like Metroid and all those platformers. Yep, I think I beat this game before when I was a kid. But um that's big star button. Alright. Just quickly show you that game, that's it. And then uh, See what else we have. Maybe Jungle Jill, Jill of Jungle. Sorry, Jill of the Jungle. Also, one of my favorite platformers when I was a kid. Here. Also by Epic Mega Games. She shoots this like boomerang that comes back to her. That's a pretty unique weapon. And there's also like levels where she turns into a frog and stuff. I think I beat this game as well. Okay, the jungle map is actually like, I mean, the, the, the map in this game is not an overhead map, it's just like, you go to different uh, stages, I guess. And it's like, okay, that's a one hit death. Alright. This game requires some skill to play because of the weapon, it's, uh, you have to wait until it comes back to you. So it takes some skill to fire two at a time even. Yeah. yeah, and basically I'm just not, I'm not playing very well because I just want to go through this quickly. But uh, yeah, that's, that's Jill of the Jungle. There's only a, a limited time for me to show you this game, so that's why. Um, because of YouTube, and I know you guys don't want to like 
look at this video for too long. So let's see what other stuff we have. I think you guys seen Commando Keen already in some of my other videos. Uh, One Must Fall. Let's try that game. I used to play One Must Fall a lot too with my brother. It's one of the best. I think um, it's one of the best like fighting games for DOS. It has great sound and music. One Must Fall. There we go. Oh, also by Epic. Okay. I think I played Stefan a lot. The um, there's different mobiles like Jaguar, Shadow, Thorn, Pyrus, Electros, Kronos. Okay, they all have their own special moves. Oh my god. Alright, winner. Okay, anyways, that's One Must Fall 2097. Great game. See what else we can do. Um, we could we could of course run Shadow Warrior, classic game from 3D Realms. It's uh, using the build engine, the same as Duke Nukem 3D, Ken's Labyrinth, Power Slave, those kind of games. Oh, whoops, did I not configure the sound on this? Hold on. Set up. Let's configure the sound blaster going on this. Yeah, back then, before, if you ran games, you have to configure the sound card first. Otherwise, you won't have sound. Okay, there. Now we should get sound on it. Valid or conflicting IRQ. Huh. Okay, that's weird. The sound's not working on this one. Huh. Let me try a different game then. The Shadow Warrior is a pretty cool game. It's too bad the sound doesn't work. Um, what else? Let me try Tura. Uh, not Tura. Uh, Rise of the Triad. That's a great game. Okay, Rise of the Triad, another great game using the build engine. This is like one of the first uh, land games that I ever played, is Rise of the Triad, I think. Okay, there we go. You can dual wield, which is really cool.
and there's like cool jump pads and like you know really cool weapons like there's like infernal weapons and stuff flamethrowers and I think you, there's even a dog mode in this game heat seeking missiles I think those are all I think they're called drunken missiles yeah those are all in this game which is really cool Multiplayer is one of the best things about this game. These are the jump pads, here we go. Jump pad on that. Oh wow, I died. That is Rise of the Triad, which is a great game. Another game I want to show you guys is um, a game called Highway Hunter. It's not very well known, but it's one of the games I played a lot when I was a kid. So I did a wrong command here. Okay. Okay, there we go. Highway Hunter is um, basically a top down shoot em up with using a car. The music is really good. I don't know who composed this, but the music is, is really good in this game. Uh, top down shoot him up using a car on a highway and you can get like upgrades and stuff just like in a any other shoot him up you get these cool shields and stuff oh my god I don't think I was that bad I beat this game before Yeah, I know I, I can be at least the first level just for this video. <laughs> Weapon does a flasher. W combo, that's the weapon I have now. Just ram the shield into him, and the first boss is done. Yep, so there's Highway Hunter, great game. Used to play it a lot. I think this is actually the first DOS game I ever played, which is uh, amazing. And yeah, the music is pretty amazing in this game too. Alright, that's Highway Hunter. Let's see what else we have. Doug's son, I want to show you guys that sometime. Let's try Halloween Harry. It's another uh, side-scrolling game. 
platformer that I like. Wow, it's fast. Here's my jetpack. Okay, so switch weapon. Jetpack fire, okay. This is the opposite problem of Monster Bash on this thing. Monster Bash ran too slow, this thing runs a little bit too fast. Oh, I forgot center. The thing is the enemies come back to life within uh, within a few minutes, which is really annoying. You can flamethrower them, but then come back to life. Well, there you are. See, we respond. They respawn. It's really annoying. It's a little bit too fast. I can't play on <laughs> this. But yeah, that's a good game, though. I like he's, how he's using a PDA. Alright. What else we got? Um, you guys seen Hexen? Hexen is also using Build Engine, I think. It's like the sequel to Heretech, which is almost the same game. And just think of this game as like Doom, except you can choose a class. And I'll choose Mage. It's like Doom with a class on it. start. <laughs> Here it takes like this too, when you start the game, you just get a whole bunch of enemies right on your ass. It's just crazy. I haven't played this game for a long time. See, look at all the enemies already, holy crap. Alright, oh, almost dead already. <laughs> that is Hexen. Try quick too. I believe quick two is okay on this. Some games. Oh, this game can't run in DOS mode. Okay, guess not. Um, Kilo Blaster. That's a good game. Kilo K file one. Okay, that's it. This game has really cool music and sound effects. <laughs> yeah. Prepare for battle. That's right. Wow. Wow. I love the sound effects in this game. So Wow, wow. Hi. So funny.
Ooh. So funny. The sound effects are the best. Ooh. Ooh. I think that's someone actually saying that. Can you imagine who made these sound effects? They must be in just some room somewhere. <laughs> they must be just in some room somewhere. And then, like, they made these sound effects for this game. And they say, like, ooh and stuff. Funny. Okay. And let's see what else we have. Um, you guys have seen Blake Stone already. Um, and the other is probably you've seen other videos. Ken's Labyrinth, Catacomb, Abyss. I think I've shown Catacomb Abyss, right? Or not? Because that's also one of the first first person shooters, along with Ken's Labyrinth, Wolfenstein 3D, Ultima 3D, I think. Those are some of the really early first person shooters. And um, Elder Scrolls Arena, that's another one. Um, okay. I think it's a Cata Abyss. This game scared me a lot when I was a kid, because um, it had like giant eyeballs and teleporting, yeah, teleporting giant eyeballs and like demons and stuff. This is really not like a game you want to play late at night. When I was a kid, I was just terrified of this game. Ah, uh, yes, this is um, you can definitely see how primitive th primitive this is. But this was like ID Software's first first-person shooter. That's right. It's even older than Wolfenstein 3D. So before they made Wolfenstein, ID made um, Catacomb Abyss. And you start out with this graveyard with a lot of zombies and stuff. And later on, you'll face like demons and elves and trolls and stuff. Yeah, this game is really spooky. <laughs> Even though there's no music. It's kind of scary. Oh my god. There's like hidden passages, a lot of these. Oh man. There's a key. Oh my god. There. I can like shoot in a circle with pressing X, and I can shoot in a line by pressing Z. You know, those are these two special moves. Yep. Oh. And yeah, there's a lot of hunting for keys and stuff in this game. It really is like a... It takes a while. I beat this game before, but it takes a while. Okay. Things are getting very nasty in the catacombs. You can see all the horrible creatures there. Really frightening. Alright. For a kid, anyway. Um, let's try Biomanus, and then... B-1. I play this a lot too. Okay, um, the game. There we go. Standard side scrolling platformer. You can actually buy this game still on Steam. It's on the uh, it's in the Apogee. Apogee Anthology, or, um, yeah, the flat Apogee Anth Anthology, and you can buy it still. Yeah, I remember the games were really difficult to play. You die in, like, a single hit, almost, almost a single hit. Throw grenades. Yep. There we go. Yep. 
I beat this game too when I was young. That's uh, Bio Menace. The last game I want to show you guys, you guys have seen Commander Keen, I think, already. So I want to show that. Um, is um, Death Dwellers. Yeah. This game is really funny because it was like not really well known back in the day, but man, the sound effects are amazing in this game. Try soft. <laughs> yeah, the sound effects are the best in this game. And me and my brother actually like played this on the car stereo when we drove. And it was so funny just like hearing this on the car stereo. Can you just imagine like playing this on like a loudspeaker and stuff? Hey! Boo boo. So yeah, we just like hooked it up to the car stereo and then we, <laughs> we, we played this. It's so funny. <laughs> hey! Wow. He has a cannon in the middle of his chest. Great design. Hey. All right, that's enough of that. It's not a good game, but it's just hilarious. <laughs> I think with Blake Stone, it has like the best sound effects. Anyways, that's um, DOS Box on the Open Pandora. I've seen you. I've shown you guys quite a few games on here already. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions about these games.